Sandwiches wrapped up hey, everybody. Good morning. So it's, um, it's lecture eight, uh, 1040, well, 1041. And um, I, Brian and Jason are here. I think I, there was a typo in my email saying we we're going to meet from 10 to 1030. What I meant to say was 1030 to 11. So anyway, I'm here now. <laughs> and a couple things I want to take care of right off the bat. Um, I just want to look into the um, Moodle shell a little bit. I'm going to catch myself up on, on some of the postings. Looks like I've got one final unread post from week one, so I'll catch up on that. Hey, everyone. This is from Cody. Let's see what's new with Cody. Um, hey, Brad, I think you're right. Oh, so Cody and I were talking a little bit about um, taking some animal products and, you know, how would you, what would you do with bones either from a hunting expedition or from your own kitchen? And so here's Cody. I think you're right. If the bones were ground up, then they wouldn't take so long to break down. So um, what I was talking about is, you know, turning bones into bone meal. There's, you know, a lot of calcium in there, a lot of uh, good nutrients for, for plants and for soil. As far as the leftovers, like the bones and fat and whatnot, the dogs usually get that stuff. Another good repurposing. I mean, I think that's, you know, con conventional um, humans and dogs have been living together symbiotically in that, in that manner for a long time. Uh, we would like to use more of the carcass like Indians did, but it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, effort I don't mind, but I don't have the time. The only part we don't eat that we use are the antlers for occasionally knife or hatchet handle. So we made buttons. Uh, didn't turn out pretty well. I've got a friend who made some, um, made some leather from a hide. And I guess in this, in this case, I mean, there's so many different parts of the animal. Uh, and my, my advice, my own philosophy here would be to preserve it in some way so that at some time when someone comes along and says, hey, I'll process that, you know, turn it into to something. Um, Pacific does hides. Yeah, can, oh, Pacific does yeah, hides. They used to get farm dogs. Really? Interesting. Okay. I don't think we really have clean or anything. Huh. Just keep them and bring it in. Yeah. Do they, um, they don't, they process it some way or? They, they probably give it to some place to hide those. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's good to know. Okay. Well. I mean, I have seen people um, use around the season. You see more. I've seen a few people tanning their own leather, but oh my goodness, it's really labor intensive. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like you know, like Cody's saying here, it is, it is time and labor intensive, but you know, leave it to the pros. Give give it uh, give it to the pros. That, I just I'm just now trying to educate myself on composting and. Um, one gal did a video where she has an earth tub that's constantly moving, and she throws everything in it, whether it's meat products, mm. dairy products, yeah. and bones and all. Yeah. And then when she takes the um, the finished compost out, she runs it through a screen, and then she takes all the big stuff and just throws it right back in. And, mm. and as a kind of a starter for the next. Oh, she kind of perpetually keeps the animal products going through the earth tub. Yeah. I I think I think it can work. Um, I mean, the, the, in terms of some of the animal products, I don't know if maggots are in there or not. You know, if, if you've got, um, you know, de depending on when that goes in, if a, if a fly has laid eggs on that product, and maybe, maybe that's okay. I, I, I don't know well, and, composting and to the nth and degree I'm either. I'm just now looking into vermiculture. Vermiculture is another one for animal products. Yeah. I like that. Okay. All right, let me, um, and, and again, I only have like 15 minutes here, so I'm just going to kind of keep moving. A couple other things I need to But the bones, to. you're right. They, there's a lot of minerals and calcium. Yeah, a lot of minerals and calcium. All right, so Sam is taking on the enviable task of dealing with Tetra Packs. Um, also be recycled. And, and Sam, this is, this is um, exactly the type of post that I um, that I'm looking for. So thank you very much for being quantitative with this. Um, tetra packs can be recycled. I would, you know, if you don't wouldn't mind, Sam, I would like to know what they mean by recycled, like by whom and in what manner. 
Yep, fiber recycling, that packaging can go back into fiber. Uh, the polymer, full carton, produced material. Okay, so maybe this is another way where it just gets ground up and maybe it's a filler for materials that don't mind having multiple types of materials in them. Okay. Um, no problem about the late submission. <laughs> That's what I want to get to next is um, I'm here in week four and it's, it's the end of week four and I only see two, two submissions to the, to the forum and they're both from me. <laughs> So, um, you know, this, this, is a, this is an online course. Not everybody's in lecture, obviously. So, your, you know, your, your way to participate and interact with your colleagues is, is right through here. I'm going to show you one of my little landfill practice um, additions to this week's lecture. This was just taken this morning outside the, the, the swimming pool. Uh, the swimming pool and the art center share a building. Uh, the dumpster next door had some, some diapers, and I think that's, that's a big challenge, you know, uh, what, what you do with the, you know, literally disposable diapers. I mean, that's what they're called. Uh, we did talk about fire suppression strategies previously. This is, this is wood. I mean, this is fuel, and this is, you know, in my mind, pretty atrocious that we're putting that much embodied energy. Well, we're actually putting additional embodied energy <laughs> into wood, which has a fairly substantial energy density, and actually paying for it. It's just, it's just kind of gross. I'm not sure how, what else to say about it. <laughs> yeah, hazmat. So. Anyway, I, you know, I, I try not to get depressed about it when I, you know, when I see that and the fact that it could be even like sold as campfire wood at a, <laughs> at a roadside. It could, be, it could be turned into some of these um, uh, German gardening techniques where the wood is buried and then eventually turns to soil. There's so much better things to do with the wood than to put it in the landfill. Okay, and then finally, the last thing I want to do here today is reach out to Ted Carnes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about more more about Ted. I brought his book with me. Highly recommend reading it. I like his practices, I like his philosophy. So let's look him up online. Unfortunately I sold my signed copy. I'm really sorry Ted if you're listening to this. Um, so he's he's way off grid in Pennsylvania. His wife works um, not too far from the, from the house. There he is. I'm going to see if I can't just email him while we're, while we're sitting here in class. Uh, it could be that he doesn't have anything. Ted, home, blog, links. There's their about. Read the article. So he's been he's been published recently. I was interviewed by the Independent a couple days ago, and apparently I'm going to be in the Independent for my own waste management strategies. Off on our own. Let's take a look at here. Maybe. Oh, that's too bad about Ted's book and how to order. Maybe we just contact him uh, this way. Oh, so he's got it buy now. You don't buy it directly from him. Let's just try it this way. Okay, so we'll, kinda, we'll contact him through the, the back door. So what I'd really love to do is have Ted Skype into one of our lectures here. So I'll just shoot him an email. Ted, can you please send me an email? Six, two, four, three, 
seven eight six five sometime to discuss a possibility of featuring you um, in my recycling technology course. Thanks, Brad. Okay, there we go. There's the invitation. We'll see if it responds. Um, I will not be here next week. I'll give a couple little lectures from from Billings. Um, actually, I'm going to be on the road. I'll, I'll do something from Helena. I'm going to stop there, actually have a conversation with the folks at the EPA about a pyrolysis unit that we're considering putting in at the hospital. So I'll give a little uh, lecture from Helena. Just a half hour or so, we'll look at glass waste streams. I'm also going to show you a couple ideas for water catchment that I've come up with for wine bottles. Um, I'll also right now answer uh, Brian's question. So Brian and Jason are focusing primarily on organic waste. So Brian's working on see if we can get one of these big bellies that's here in town. Is that what it's called? Big belly? No. Earth tub. Earth tub. Big belly is a different one. Um, earth, earth tubs here on Missoula College property, start using it with culinary, start using it with some of the other food waste that comes through here. And yes, that is considered your 15, you know, part of your 15 hours of service or out, outside class activity. So yes, please do document in writing your progress. You know, give yourself a task, keep the contacts uh, listed, put down your goals, you know, what you know, in a, in a timeline, just like you would with any other any other project. And finally, um, I need to say that um, I really do need to see uh, better participation in the um, in the forums. You know, because if, if I mean, sure, the quizzes are fine, and it's great having the students here in lecture. But you know, if, if um, students that are purely purely taking this online are not chiming in the forums, it's going to be hard for me to give you a, a grade. <laughs> that's, that's part of the class. And, and um, so use the forums. Uh, they've been used appropriately, but I'd really like to see more activity in there. All right. Well, that's the end of week four. I've got to get off to a little meeting here on, on main campus. And like I said, I'm giving a keynote in Billings at the Harvesting Clean Energy. And let me just show you that one. Energy 2015 uh, conference. So I'll be giving one of the talks amongst other people, uh, some pretty prominent individuals also speaking. So that's where I'll be next week, and I'll uh, but I'll, I'll stay up to date on the course with our talks on glass. All right, well, there we go. Got it done.